for decades, you know, getting into space was this really exclusive thing, super expensive, incredibly slow. But what if launching a satellite felt more like, well, sending a package, yeah. fast and affordable? There's some massive news coming out of India's space sector that could be doing just that. It really signals a whole new era. Okay, let's unpack this. It's a major agreement. Seems like it could reshape how we even think about satellite launches globally. Absolutely. Uh, what we're diving into today is this really significant tech transfer deal. It's about the small satellite launch vehicle, the uh -huh. SSLV, and it's between ISRO, India Space Agency, and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL. Right, HAL. And get this, it's not just any agreement. It's the 100th one facilitated by Space. Wow, the 100th. Yeah, quite symbolic. It really marks uh, a formative step, you could say, toward opening up the SSLV space, toward democratizing it. So our mission today is to get into the what, the why, and importantly, the actual impact of this transfer. Yeah. For India, yes, but also, you know, for everyone else. Okay, this SSLV, it sounds like it's right at the heart of this. Here's where it gets really interesting for me. What makes it such a big leap? You know, for those of us who aren't rocket scientists. Uh-huh. Fair question. You're right. It's a game changer. Basically, the SSLV is purpose-built for small satellites. Yeah. We're talking payloads up to about 500 kilograms, and it targets low Earth orbit, or LEO. LEO. Okay, the closest orbit. Exactly. That's the sweet spot for a lot of these small sets. It means lower launch costs, mm -hmm. and they're closer for things like uh, high-res Earth observation or global yeah. Internet constellations. But the key features are, well, revolutionary. It's low cost. It has an incredibly quick turnaround time, potentially just 72 hours for what they call launch on demand. 72 hours? That's, yeah. wow. Right. And it needs minimal infrastructure. It doesn't need these huge, complex launch sites. Simpler pads work. That drastically cuts down prep time, setup costs, everything. So, okay, it's not just about getting, like, faster internet on your phone, though that's part of it. Yeah. How does this actually democratize space access? What could that mean practically for Allen down here? Precisely. Think bigger. Imagine um, agriculture getting hyper-local weather data for precision farming, or maybe insurance companies using real-time satellite views for disaster assessment. Instantly, startups could deploy their own small satellite groups for completely new services, things that were just way too expensive before. Like an Uber for satellites, you mentioned. Kind of, yeah. It fundamentally shifts who gets to use space. It can spark this huge wave of innovation. It blurs the lines, you know, between the big government players and nimble private companies. It's democratization in action, really. That is a massive shift. So how does this actually happen? Let's get into the nuts and bolts of the agreement itself. Okay, the specifics. ISRO is transferring the complete technical know-how for making the SSLV over to HAL, the whole package. And they plan to get this done within uh, 24 months, two years. Two years, okay. And HAL won this contract? They did. It was a competitive bidding process, and HAL came out on top. So HAL's new role is to independently build the rockets and operate the launch services for customers here in India and internationally, too. Right. And who oversees all this? Well, you've got in space. Think of them as the facilitator, the regulator, and the bridge to the private sector. And then there's New Space India LTD, or NSIL, which is basically ISRO's commercial arm. Dr. Pawan Kumar Goenka, the IN space chairman, put it nicely. He called it a vital leap toward strengthening the industrial ecosystem. And importantly, positioning India as a global hub for affordable and reliable launch services. It's a clear strategy. So what does this all mean for the bigger picture then? This deal with HL is concrete, but how does it change India's whole game plan in space? Are there maybe challenges in scaling this up so fast? That's the crucial point. Strategically, this lets ISRO shift gears big time. They can step back from the routine manufacturing and commercial launches. This frees them up to really focus on the cutting edge stuff, advanced R&D, deep space missions like Chandrayaan. Their moon missions. Exactly. And Gaganyan. Their human spaceflight program. Really ambitious projects. They essentially hand off the established tech to industry. ISRO becomes the innovator. Industry becomes the manufacturer and operator. Makes sense. Passing the baton. In a way, yes. And this isn't just about serving India. They are squarely aiming at the global small satellite market. It's worth billions. The plan is to offer frequent, dependable launches that are critically cost competitive, become the go-to provider. And ISRO's leadership sees it this way, too. Oh, absolutely. ISRO Chairman Veena Ryan called this the next phase of deep tech collaboration in space in India. It's more than just handing over blueprints. It's about deep partnership, getting ISRO's research into industrial production quickly. And using ISRO's decades of manufacturing experience is key to scaling up fast. 
It strengthens the whole Indian space ecosystem. So India is not just reaching for the stars anymore. It seems like they're very strategically building this industrial powerhouse on Earth, too, aimed at the global market. Exactly. Which leads to maybe a final thought for you, our listeners, to chew on. As this democratization of space, driven by things like the SSLV, really takes hold and lowers those barriers, how might it fundamentally reshape who gets to innovate? Not just big agencies, but maybe, you know, entrepreneurs, researchers, even students with a great idea. What happens next? 